Good morning. Welcome to St. David's on this bright November day and to our contemporary service. If you are here just for the contemporary service, just for today, we're happy to have you and hope you'll join us after the service for a time of coffee and fellowship in the church hall. We have a very full bulletin and I have no intention of reading all the notices in it, so, but I encourage you to take the time to do that at your leisure. Uh, I would like to welcome the members of the band and we have a new new Matthew this morning. We have Brian on keyboard, Gordon on violin, Owen and Matthew Culp on guitar, and Alex on drums, and a new Matthew Clements on guitar. So we hope you enjoy the service. Thank you. going to be happening at St. Andrews uh, on behalf of Canada uh, 2014 has been cancelled and will be moved to a different date. So in case you were looking at that particular announcement amongst the dozens that are in this quite thick bulletin, uh, just wanted you to know that. Also, um, I'm uh, doing the Grand Falls St. Matthew's Presbyterian Church service tonight at 7 p.m. And for those of you who know how long it takes to uh, drive to Grand Falls in good conditions, um, I'll uh, be leaving directly after the service. I'll go to the back and greet you there and then get in my car and <laughs> go on. So, uh, so that's what's happening with me today. And uh, thanks for your prayers and uh, for uh, caring for us. We have three churches in Newfoundland, just in case you didn't know. Presbyterians don't have too many here, but uh, there's two here, uh, St. Andrews and St. David's, and then uh, St. Matthew's in Grand Falls. Now, you know we're having a contemporary service. You may not know what that means, um, even though we've been doing it for a while. It, it, it's, it's a time where we gather through music. And we gather through some of the newer music uh, that uh, a lot of the rest of the church is singing to the Lord. It's Christ the King Sunday, and you'll notice that as our theme throughout the music, and uh, both the contemporary and the hymns. So as we come to God, we need to draw close to God, come away from our distractions, the things that pull us away from the Lord during this hour, and to, uh, to come into God's presence uh, musically. So let's just pray as we begin, and of course we'll pray at the end as well. 
Let's bow our heads together, shall we? The Lord, you know our hearts. You know where we're coming from today. You know us better than we know ourselves. We're grateful, Lord, to be able to offer our worship in this public place back to you. We're grateful for those worshipers that we joined around the world, millions of people on every continent on the earth, in thousands of languages. We thank you, Lord, that we can join that great cloud of witnesses this day. And so we do, and we worship you, in Jesus' name. Amen. So you'll see in your bulletin the music words. Uh, we encourage you to stand uh, throughout the set. If that's too hard, don't feel bad about standing or sitting down. But uh, we will be encouraging you to stand. So let's stand to sing, The King Has Come.
are there uh, getting to know God better. We realize that we're forgiven for, because of all the King has done for us. God bless you. Yeah.
may be seated and let's pray together, shall we? Lord, you are great. You are worthy of our praise. Worthy giving you back all the gifts and talents and creativity that we have within us. Worthy of our praise. You gave yourselves, you gave yourself for us. And we are grateful this, this day. Come to you with our little ones. We come to you with all that we are. Saying, Lord, you are God. There is no other. And we acknowledge in this moment, Lord, that there are places in our lives where we seek others. Seek fulfillment in other places besides you. Look for life in other places besides you. Rebel against your ways and your will. Help us, Lord, as we quietly confess our sins to you, any attitudes or actions or inactions against your way. We confess them to you now.
Come on up, boys and girls. It's your time. You may be seated.
The Old Testament lesson this morning is taken from Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 1 to 6, which you'll find on page 1165 in your pew Bibles. Jeremiah 23, beginning at the first verse. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. And the second reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 to 20, and that's on page 1753. Colossians 1, beginning at verse 11. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Turn with me then, please, to Psalm uh, 46 found on page 845 in the Pew Bible. We'll read responsibly there. I'll read the first verse and you the next and so on. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He 
The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. And then the Gospel reading from Luke chapter 23. Perhaps surprising in late November to read about the crucifixion, but on the day that Jesus shows himself to be a king, not in the way people expected, but in the way that the Lord desired. If you'd like to read along, it's on 1573 in the Pew Bible, verses 33 to 43 of Luke 23. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I'm, I'm, I'm pausing and I'm, I'm looking because I'm on the wrong chapter. So don't listen to my page. 23, 33, sometimes my brain does this, I'm sorry about that. 33 to 43, and it is about the crucifixion, and that's good. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he's God's Messiah, the chosen one. Soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, Today you will be with me in paradise. Amen, and thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, help us to take in all that you have done for us. We know that we rebel often inside against the things that are for us from you. Help us to receive that which comes from your hand that we might know you and love you. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Crown him with many crowns is the hymn 274 in the hymnal 274.
Let us pray. Lord, we quiet ourselves before you anew to know what it means to be in the King's presence. Lord, help us. Bring all that we are to all that you are. Have our lives anew. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I'd like to uh, once again talk to you about uh, the most powerful relationship we can have in this life. Uh, But before doing so, I'm realizing it's uh, kind of a historical moment here in the congregation. Uh, I suppose across the culture, across North America, and across the world, marking both the 50th anniversary of the assassination of President Kennedy, uh, when I mentioned a couple of weeks ago where and when I was in the hospital in Dallas as a child getting my tonsils out. The other 50th anniversary is that of the Doctor Who science fiction series on BBC, which I have spent some hours uh, of dedication to. It's a strange coalescence of events, and so using Rex Murphy's logic that poses seeing Mike Duffy as the next mayor of Toronto, may I suggest that the conspiracy around Kennedy's assassination has something to do with Doctor Who. That's my attempt to be humorous. Thank you for those who got that. Let me get back to some of the reasons why we come here. We come here to worship, to find the primal relationship that makes sense of life. We come here, I believe, to fulfill the deepest part of us that needs to be loved by the one who created us. Many have argued in the intellectual sphere in the last hundred years and more that history will see science banish religion or should have already done so by now. Or take someone like Sigmund Freud who saw religion and spirituality as a kind of addiction to illicit drugs, an illusion that needs to be stamped out. Uh, Carl Jung, who is sort of his protege, took the opposite route that led to the view that any religion is true. Whether any of the major religions or your own eclectic version, whatever suits you, whatever is good for you is good. Of course, neither of these views fulfills us. Biblical Christianity, however, draws us to the one true God, revealed to Israel, revealed to all in Jesus Christ. The psalmist addresses our basic needs in Psalm 46 as he sings about God. And what does he sing? He sings, God is our safe place. In the safety of knowing God, we can face the uncertainty of the weather, the extremes of earthquakes, tsunamis, climate change, and atmospheric degradation. Nation states will come and go, he sings. Kingdoms and empires will fade away, but God will remain. His voice will change the earth into molten lava. And yet that same voice can bring peace to our restless hearts. And so we need to exercise enough quiet to hear God. As we remember from that psalm, be still. More than an overused phrase for a hyperactive child. Quieting down is one of the ways we can receive the peace and grace of God. And we need it more than ever as we come into this next month. The loudest, the busiest season of the year. I hope you'll be able to take some quiet time during this Advent Christmas season. I believe this coming season used to be something different years ago. I may be wrong. You, you can tell me if you remember differently. Something that had more to do with worship and family gatherings. Maybe we didn't have as much financially. Today it seems more to be that heavy consumption, often of expensive items. Today the coming season seems to be more about economic engines and insatiable sales. But you and I can return this season to the season of peace 
the inner peace that flows from the one from Jesus Christ who it is dedicated to. We find it strange, as I mentioned at the reading that we read from the crucifixion on this day in late November. The lectionary is called Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday before Advent. Here we are reminded that our lofty ideals about God's power and God's prowess as creator are transformed into images of Jesus giving up power, handing himself over to the authorities, although he had done nothing wrong. On that day of the crucifixion, we find Jesus forgiving those who had tortured him, mocked him, stole his clothes, his last possession, and offered him sour wine. We're reminded this is the one we are called to follow. They taunted him by saying if he were truly a king or anything like what he had proclaimed himself to be, then he should have come down from the cross and saved himself, which he could have done. But his mission wasn't to save himself, but everyone else. Even one of those who was tortured right next to him, who knew the crime that he himself had committed, cursed the Lord Jesus and taunted him to come off the cross to save himself and those who were hanging next to him. Yet the other criminal knew Jesus was not hung on a cross for anything wrong. And this criminal rebuked the other criminal for cursing Jesus. This criminal asked for grace and mercy, and he received it. So it is with you and I. I suppose the world is divided into two camps today, along the lines of those criminals hanging beside Jesus. There are those who believe that Jesus is who he says he is, and those who curse and defy Jesus with their attitudes and actions. And I, the question today, of course, as it is every Sunday, what camp do you choose to put yourself in this day? I know you're in church. I know you're here to worship. But I know myself well enough to ask myself that question for this day. We must be sure we are on the Lord's side. We must make sure we have given ourselves to the Lord. Are we willing to commit our future paths, our health, our family, or major and minor decisions to the Lord. Surrendering ourselves, our lifestyles, our relationships, our safety, our our futures to the Lord is the key. One day, each and every one of us will be in the presence of the King and we will see him face to face. We will then know face to face what we only believe without seeing right now. We will give an account of our lives to the one who already knows, the one who holds our lives in his hands. We have many choices in this life. There are many roads we will not have traveled, and many ones we will choose and have chosen. Is the Lord pleased with what we are doing with our lives, how we are situating ourselves in this life? Do we need to right a wrong somewhere in our past? Or do we need to ask forgiveness of someone? And on behalf of the church again, if there's anything that this place has done to you where you need forgiveness, please forgive us on behalf of the church. We need to ask the Lord for courage to follow him then pledge ourselves to follow no matter what. It's as simple as the children's prayer today and as complex as our day-to-day living and decisions. When we promise to follow Jesus, it is a pledge to take up endurance and patience and gratitude, even the most difficult of times in our lives. We remember, as it says in Colossians 1, that we have been transferred from the dark kingdom to the light. And being in the light means we do not need to hide or keep secrets of wrongdoing anymore. We can be honest, open and honest before God and simply be who we are. We are freed to be who we are by the forgiveness and love accomplished by Jesus Christ. And we can know his love and acceptance anew. All this happens as this day we say yes to Christ again 
right now. We can have a fresh start right now. So we can say in our hearts and know that God is giving you what you need. The royal audience that is being the presence of the king or the queen is a big deal in those countries that have monarchy around the world, including this one. Getting to have a chat or a lunch or a dinner with a monarch is the height of many individuals' life memories. Today, of course, we have the privilege of knocking on the king's door anytime and anywhere where there is never a busy signal, only the open door. We may not get all the answers we desire, but we can know who we are and be reassured that we are loved, safe, and secure in the Lord's house. We have what we need. Unlike this church building or any church building, Jesus' door is constantly open and ready to receive. We can go there as quickly as we can close our eyes and say, Dear God, let's pray together, shall we? Dear God, draw us to your very self again. We have no other place of rest in the same way and nor of peace in the same way except the peace that passes understanding that comes from your hand and heart you take us as we are Lord for all our faults and sins and you hold us and love us help us to know you in this moment to love you, to trust you for the rest of our lives. For all the things that scare us. For all the things that bring us joy. For our children and grandchildren. For our parents and grandparents. We trust you anew. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's good to give back a portion of all that we have in this life to say that we love God and love God's ways in a practical way with our money. And so we give and take up our offering at this time and bring forward as well the cart that we, where we give food to Bridges to Hope that are distributed then to those who are in need. Let's give again to God as the ushers come forward.
say again, I surrender all. All to Jesus, Lord. For his will and way in this place. For his will and way in our lives. Melt our hearts where we are hard and cold towards you. Use these gifts and this food to warm the hearts of those who don't know you to you and your ways. That we all together might enjoy all that you give to us in this season and always. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanksgiving. It's a time of intercession. It's a time to uh, bring to the God those things which are heavy on our hearts and also to say thank you for those things that are warming us and keeping us uh, full of praise. And so we come to this time and I encourage you to bring those who you need to know God for those who they need to know God and so we trust the Lord with this time and uh, give you space and silence to do so let us pray take a moment Lord as we do week by week to say that we are grateful Grateful for our lives, grateful for our relationships, the ones that bring us joy and the ones that challenge us. Grateful to you for our health. Political freedom to be here, mental ability simply to be able to come this day we don't take these gifts for granted oh God but again say thank you trust you for those who are nearby us this day in this place bless them those all around us give them what they need serve you, to choose you, to walk with you, to give their gifts, abilities, and talents back to you, and give us the same grace, we pray. And Lord, there are people in our lives, whether they be nearby or... or uh, thousands of miles away we um, want to mention them by name to you continuing to pray for health and for uh, those who have gone through difficult times for Tonya, for Chris for others Lord and for those who are experiencing loss whether it's a recent one or a long time ago anything in between We pray now for those who need you, your grace and your love. So we quietly mention them to you now.
bring what they need. Let's bring them to you. Use us in our words. Help us not to be fearful to share even the slightest part of our own spiritual lives with them. We trust you and thank you for these times together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to end with a song as well uh, today, which is uh, Your Grace is Enough, which is kind of in the second position. Sorry about that in the insert. Hope that didn't cause too many problems. And um, any uh, words of organizational skill for this one? Or? No, no, okay, just, just do the best you can, and we'll stand to sing. And it's a beautiful thought to end our service with today. Your grace is enough.
have a coffee time down there. Hope you can come to it. I won't be coming, but we hope you uh, can s spend some time together. Now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, friendship, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.